see what the court might do about abortion if they'll keep in place uh, the the Dane County Circuit Court ruling restoring access to abortion in Wisconsin. Um, But there are still a number of cases before the court uh, that have to do with um, kind of the balance of power between the governor and the legislature, uh, various laws that govern uh, elections, you know, from drop boxes to absentee ballots. So, um, you know, the, the court has had a lot of things before it. It will continue to, to handle those things. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, there's still a lot of time left for um, the, the balance that's in place. And, and Walsh Bradley has indicated she will serve out the rest of her term. She's not planning on stepping down early. So there's still a lot of time for them to tackle a lot of these issues. Um, but, you know, it may also mean, and this was probably the case, regardless with an election coming up, that you know, they might hold off on, uh, at some point, start holding off on taking some new controversial cases because they don't know what the makeup of the court's going to look like when they're decided. But as we look to 2025 in that election for her open seat, we've already got one candidate, a conservative candidate, uh, a former attorney general for Wisconsin, Brad Schimmel, who has already been campaigning for quite some time now. You've seen a few liberal candidates get into the race, Chris Taylor from Dane County, uh, Susan Cross. Crawford, also from Dane County. How does this shake up and what should Wisconsin voters be prepared for in the months ahead? You know, I, 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 it's like Matt said, it's always election season in Wisconsin. Um, the one thing I am curious about is I think uh, conservative candidates may have been hesitant to set up a primary when they knew that they were going to be running against a long-term incumbent, um, you know, and Walsh Bradley has been on the court, which would have been her fourth term if she if she sought re-election. So, you know, that's that's a strong candidate with the incumbent advantage, fundraising advantages. Um, now that they know that liberal candidates are going to have a primary of their own, do we see more conservative candidates get in? you know, worrying less about the damaging effects of a primary. Matt, and that's the next question, really, is are, are conservatives going to learn their lesson and line up behind the candidate they, they've already got put forward? Time will tell, right? Um, and, and to your point on what voters are going to see, expect a ton of commercials, mailers. We're going to be inundated in this race. 2022 was the most expensive court race in the country ever. The predictions are that this could surpass that now because control of the court is once again at stake. And as Jesse outlined, we have incredible high profile issues. So now are we, are we going to have a scenario where the court flipped from a conservative majority to liberal. Are we going to go back to conservative or stay liberal and ping pong some of these major issues that the state is, is facing? Well, in that race that you're referring to, $50 million was spent on that race. Well, and, and in 2026, I know we're only, that's only, you know, a few months beyond the 2025, you've got Rebecca Bradley, mm-hmm. uh, who will be running yeah. for re-election there, too. It, it's a never-ending a never ending cycle, right? And, and uh, I think this set the stage for the importance of Supreme Court races, and, and, and it kind of... In some essence, we've seen this over the last 10, 20 years, but but it really opened the curtain in the fact that, yes, judges say they are nonpartisan. These are technically nonpartisan mm-hmm. races, and, and and every justice on that bench will, will say they abide by the law. Their interpretation is quite different. Um, but the political nature of, of these campaigns was o- o- open immensely in 2022. And I think we're going to see that even more in 2024. We had Congresswoman Gwen Moore on the show on Sunday. And listen, she is a Democratic Congresswoman. And I asked her about the retirement looking forward. And she was incredibly quick to point out how Democrats are going to be looking for a candidate. I think we have one of those clips we can we can play. Congresswoman Gwen Moore was on up front Sunday. I'm curious your reaction to that. And if there's anyone you would like to see run for that seat. And she's she's been an amazing jurist. She's been an amazing jurist. And I wish her well in her retirement. Uh, I do know that we are going to be trying to recruit uh, someone that is capable, who's experienced, and someone who really shares the values of protecting the rights of voters, protecting the rights of people's uh, bodily autonomy, protecting the rights of every voter uh, to have their voice heard. And so we will be, I will be looking and listening and waiting uh, to see who that candidate might be. Well, and you listen to Gwen Moore. I mean, isn't that how we all want to think about our Supreme Court justices? I mean, that seems very level-headed. But Mm -hmm. like you said, 
this is political. It's the politics of it, right? Democrats looking to uh, uh, find liberal candidates to run and, and conservatives with Brad Schimmel. And as Jesse pointed out, seeing if more now are going to enter the race because it, it's essentially wide open. I have a question here from the text line. She's, it says, why didn't she just resign now and let Governor Evers appoint a temporary replacement, giving them the incumbent edge in the full term election next spring? Is that even possible? Jessie? It is possible. Yeah, it is. She, she could have done that. Um, and we haven't really gotten any indication why she didn't other than, um, you know, she, I think, just wants to serve out her term. I don't I don't know. So Ann Walsh Bradley is probably one of the last candidates to run a race really trying to step away from the partisan links. You know, her, she last ran in 2015. She didn't accept money. Uh, from the Democratic Party in that race. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of outside spending, you know, from liberal groups benefiting her. But we've seen, you know, as we've seen the model of these campaigns change over the last probably 25 years or so, a lot of that change has happened in the last 10. And my my best guess, if I had to make one, is that she's just not considering the politics here. Speaking of candidates stepping away, Congressman Mike Gallagher is vacating. I believe this week he is done serving in the 8th. Uh, Matt, last uh, on Sunday, on Sunday's show, you actually talked to another former congressman, mm-hmm. Reed Ribble. We will discuss that when we come back, all about the 8th, right here on WTMJ. Tony Drake here from Drake & Associates. Big news. Our Retirement Ready Radio Show is moving to a new time slot. Catch us at noon every Saturday. At Drake & Associates, we craft tailor-made plans that not only meet your financial needs, but align seamlessly with your unique lifestyle. Tune in at noon on Saturdays and get retirement ready. Drake & Associates LLC is an independent investment advisory firm that offers a variety of different investment vehicles. This commercial is provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as individual investment advice. Drake & Associates LLC does not provide legal or tax advice. Hey, this is Steve Scafidi for Advent. I had some snoring issues that kept my wife up at night. That led to poor sleep and a lot of tired mornings on the radio, and nobody wants that, trust me. But it's simply, my nose wasn't working the way it should. I decided to go to Advent for a quick 30-minute visit, one of their great facilities, talk to a bunch of their doctors. They really put me at ease. After a really simple sleep study at home, in my own bed, they determined the root cause of my problem had to do with my sinuses and nasal passages in my breathing triangle. I didn't even know I had a breathing triangle, so I went to see Advent. After a short procedure done in office, I'm back to breathing well, and my wife and I are both back to sleeping through the whole night. The best sleep we've ever had, that could be you. If you struggle with restless nights like I did, take the time to see how Advent can help. To find out how breathing well and sleeping well can make your life and your nights a whole lot better, go to AdventKnows.com, schedule an appointment today. Because Advent knows, when you breathe well, you live better. Suit up for the $800,000 Sports Car Series at Palo Alto Casino Hotel, Milwaukee. April through May, score free play, cash, one of four new Toyota GR86s, or a new Toyota Supra. Play with your club card to earn entries, five times the entries on drawing days, and with the Milwaukee Brewers play at home. Got what it takes? Slugger, only at Palo Alto. For more details, visit basebig.com slash sports car. Must be 21 and a club member to play. Welcome back on WTMJ Political Power. Matt Smith, political director for WISN and host of Upfront, and Jesse Ahoyan with the Milwaukee Journal political team. All right, so big news. Uh, actually, it's been building news, and that is Mike Gallagher not running for uh, re-election in the 8th, actually stepping down early from his term. So now what we see is a lot of people vying for that position. You've got Roger Roth, you've got Andre Jacques, and then you've got Donald Trump endorsing a candidate, Tony Weed, kind of out of the blue. Mm-hmm. Matt, what is your take on 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 this endorsement and what's going to be happening up it's, in the eight? So it's going to be incredibly fascinating, right? We now have this battle, this GOP primary battle in the eighth uh, forming and really intensifying when, when Trump gave his endorsement to Tony Weed former business owner, owner of a chain of gas stations up in the Green Bay area, longtime resident up there. A lot, some in the business world know him. A lot of average voters probably don't know him. So there's going to be this time to introduce him, unlike a Roger Roth or Andre Jacques, where voters may be a little more familiar with him just because of their time in the state legislature. It's really going to be interesting to see the Trump endorsement and the Trump in fact factor and what impact that's going to have 
especially on the primary, and then you look ahead to the general and how that all is going to play out. Well, and you talked to another former congressman, actually his uh, uh, Mike Gallagher's immediate predecessor, yep. Reed Ribble, who I think people really appreciate and respect as a as a solid Republican. And yep. and you talked to him. What did he say? Yeah, he, he is. And he is a still 100 percent Republican conservative. He served from 2011 to 2017. So we asked him uh, about the primary that's forming in his old district and, 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 and what this looks like down the road and what this potentially could mean for Democrats as well, who are now fielding candidates in the race as well, especially with the Trump factor. Let's take a listen to Reed Ribble. Uh, do you think a Democrat can win this race, this seat in 2024? Uh, I, I do. Um, I think it'll be an uphill lift. But I, I do think a Democrat could win as long as that Democrat takes a more moderate tone on things. And let's face it, uh, abortion is a very hot issue. She's, uh, she knows a lot about that topic because of her career. And um, on the left, you've got abortion as kind of the driving thing that will motivate voters. On the right, you've got issues like the border and, border and inflation. And so she's got to come up with answers for the border and inflation to get uh, independent voters. And whoever's the Republican nominee has to come up with an answer for abortion to get uh, independent voters. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how these candidates manage these hot button issues, which are all very difficult. Well, and this is a district that's something like 58 percent Republican. I mean, it seems solidly red, but there are a lot of Democrats who think this could be up up for grabs because of the issues that are on the table. And there's pockets. You look at Door County, you look at Green Bay, you look at the Appleton area. There's, there's pockets of Democratic areas and, and there's more red areas and lesser red areas. Mm -hmm. And and the question about the candidate and the question about the Trump impact, I, I think, is really going to drive this race. Jesse, what is your take on what this Trump endorsement might mean for the primary against Roger Roth and Andre Jacques and whoever else might get in this race and then how it plays out long term in the general election? Well, I thought it was interesting that in his statement endorsing Tony Weed, um, Donald Trump specifically called out Roger Roth. He didn't say anything about Andre Jacques. I don't know if that means Andre Jacques just not as on his radar or if he doesn't have as much of a problem with him. But um, he, he called Roger Roth a rhino. Um, he told him to drop out of the race. You know, Roger Roth has been kind of back and forth on his support for, for Donald Trump over the years. Um, you know, didn't seem to be terribly bothered by not getting the endorsement. But, uh, you know, I, how, how much how nasty does the, the race get, I guess, if, if we've already got Donald Trump calling on someone to drop out of the primary? Um, does he keep up the pressure on that? And are people paying attention to that? Um, I don't know that we're going to see much in the way of a Democratic primary. It sounds like People are, are lining up behind Kristen Lyerly in that case. So, you know, when, when you've got that situation, it's always a risk for the, the party that has kind of the, the messier primary. Well, and Mike Gallagher, he was a very popular candidate. I wonder if his, his kind of later months in Congress really hurt him and hurt him in terms of and hurt Roger Roth in terms of that endorsement that Mike Gallagher gave to him. Listen, Gallagher received some pushback from Republicans for his decision to leave Congress early. And I think it follows a path of some of Gallagher's votes. And when you look at the impeachment vote on the first impeachment vote on Mayorkas and just some positions he's taken and distancing from Trump. That was a major factor in, in some of the grassroots and some of the really red areas in, in the northeast part of the state, kind of pushing back on Gallagher a, a little bit. So you have Trump going after Gallagher. You have Trump going after Roger Roth, Paul Ryan. There's this segment of conservatives that if they don't fall in line with the mega message uh, immediately, that they could face that. Trump pushback. Well, this is really kind of a tale of two parties up in that district. You've got the ultra conservative and then you've got the more more mainstream. So t so time will will really tell there. But in terms of Mike Gallagher, do you think there was more to his decision and the timing than really kind of the personal reasons? Was he trying to send a message to uh, the, the really hard line right conservatives? You know, if he did, I don't know if it'll resonate. Um, he he may have tried to s send a message or, or else he just saw the writing on the wall. As Reed Ribble uh, told us, he said, listen, Congress isn't really doing much between now and, and the end of the year. So if he's going to get out, what, why not get out? Jesse, I, I don't know if you have any further insight or reporting or thoughts on that, too. No, you know, I, I, I can't speak for, <laughs> for how he's thought about things. Um, you know, I, I'm sure as he was considering things, the fact that he's got a young family at home, you yeah. know, being able to spend more time with them sooner rather than later, I'm sure was an incentive there.
Political Power Hour on WTMJ. Matt Smith, Jesse Opoyan. We'll be back with more after the break. It's 926. I'm Greg Matzik. President Biden spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. A stern warning here, they'd like to see more humanitarian efforts overseas as the U.S. continues to help fund the war. And I'm Jessica Tai. The rain is pouring down, but the roof, oh, how we love the roof at American Family Field. Roof for the win today, and hopefully the Brewers later, too. Blake Perkins, Brewers Outfitter. Support my teammates and get a win. Come on. Yeah, come on. Let's go, right? Wisconsin's Midday News. Weekdays 11 to 1 on 620 WTMJ. Hey, this is Steve Zifini for Heiser Automotive. I love talking about Heiser. You know that. Five years driving their great vehicles. Last week was moving week. I dropped off the 2023 Ford Explorer XLT, picked up a 2023 Chevy Equinox. A couple things going on here. One, I love the, the Chevy Equinox. Great vehicle. A little smaller than the Explorer, but still plenty of room. Kathy and I are going to buy a Chevy Equinox in in the summer this year, so we want to see all the features and all the cool stuff. They're loaded. Great gas mileage, all kinds of cool trim levels, a lot of safety features, including the rear vision camera, which we remarked on how clear that picture was. Lane keep assist, all kinds of technology. You get that with Chevy and all the great models and experiences you find at Heiser Automotive. You can find all of their great cars online at Heiser.com, all the great programs, including safe and sound, roadside assistance for life. That's why they say every day at Heiser, and you know this to be true, and I know it from working with them. Every day. Today's your day. I'll say it again. Our mission is to protect and uphold our reputation. And what that means is wherever we go, we make it better for those in need of our services and the great people we have working with us. Our reputation matters. It matters to us, and it should matter to you. We believe that operating with integrity will set us apart from our competitors and that this attracts people to us that share these same values. I say this because I want you to know when you work with Semper Fi, character counts. It's why you can count on the industry's hands-down best lifetime workmanship warranty that now includes free annual inspections. And it's why we always have one project manager per job, which is absolutely not the industry standard. When you're paying for a brand new roof to go on what's likely the biggest investment you have, you want it done right, and you want to be able to count on the people doing it. This is Brad Youngwith with Semper Fi Roofing and Exteriors, your local, veteran-owned and operated exterior remodeling company. We keep you safe, warm, and dry, Semper Fi. Vince Vitrano for Absolute Comfort, HVAC and Electrical. I'm joined by Nicole. She and her husband, Brent, own the company. Nicole, why should folks call you guys? Because we treat your home like ours. That means honest and high-quality work. We want you to be a part of our family. We're there for your emergencies when you need it. But most important to us is building a long-term relationship for all of your HVAC and electrical needs. Absolute Comfort, HVAC and Electrical, 262-664-9284. Yourcomfortguys.com. Welcome back on WTMJ, the political power hour. Man, that first half hour just <laughs> flew by. All right, we got about 30 seconds. Just real quick, um, we see that the Trump criminal trial is currently underway. How does the president, uh, former President Trump, leverage this from a PR standpoint? Is he going to be talking about this on social media, on Twitter? What what are we going to see here in the next couple of days? I think yes and yes. I, I know there <laughs> is the gag order in place. I, I I think he is planning or wanting to do daily news conferences coming out of the courtroom. Oh my! Gosh. Um, so I I think he's going to capitalize on this uh, as as best as he can. And and as you know, the base has has as really responded to the indictments in terms of supporting him really responded to this jesse yeah i agree completely um i think he he, he wants to talk about it he's going to talk about it i don't think he can help himself from talking about it um and and yeah i think you know this this resonates with his base um you know any anything yeah. that yep go ahead <laughs> all right we got to get to break Sighting unlimited wtmj news time is 9 30 abc news and local headlines are next this is a special report from ABC News. Trump trial begins. I'm Dave Packer. Donald Trump in court this morning, day one, as Trump faces nearly three dozen felony counts, accusing him of hiding hush money payments to an adult film actress. But Trump outside the courtroom had his own assessment. This case is nonsense. It should never have been brought. It doesn't deserve anything like this. Jury selection begins today. Could take weeks. ABC News chief legal analyst Dan Abrams says finding a jury could be tough. The standard is, is not, do you know who the defendant is? That's not what it is. The standard is not, do you know anything about the case? The standard is, 
can this person objectively evaluate the evidence? And that's where it's going to be tricky. As proceedings began this morning, Judge Juan Marchand denied a pair of motions filed by Trump's legal team seeking his recusal from the case, citing his past comments and interviews and his daughter's work with a democratically affiliated firm. This is ABC News. Citing Unlimited WTMJ News Time 931. A couple of big fires over the weekend. One in Milwaukee killed a woman and injured a firefighter who was trying to rescue her trapped in an attic. In all three houses on the south side burned. Also a big fire at an industrial area in Menominee Falls. No one hurt in that one. The cause is unknown. Most of the state is under high or very high fire danger. 37 fires burned over 300 acres across the state over the weekend, making it the single most active wildfire day so far this year. Three of Milwaukee County's top elected officials Officials will get raises after a vote from the Milwaukee County Board of Supervisors. Board adopted a nearly 12% raise for the treasurer, county clerk, and register of deeds. Decision comes after County Executive David Crowley vetoed a proposal for a 36% raise. The proposal now heads to his desk for the governor's desk for approval. Time for some news about your money and the WTMJ Annex Wealth Management Market Update. The Dow is up 167 points at 38,150. Nasdaq up 34. The S&P 500 is up 20. Annex Comprehensive Wealth Annex private client Annex Ignite. Financial planning at every level. Details at AnnexWealth.com. Take a look at your roads now with your WTMJ Johnson and Sons paving time saver traffic. I-41 East at the ramp from 76th Street. Right lane is blocked due to a crash. Uh, no other major problems to report right now. Maybe a little bit of slowing in the construction zone. I-894 westbound. The Mitchell Interchange to the Hale Interchange. That's about a 10-minute drive this morning. Your WTMJ five-day forecast, mostly sunny and mild with highs 65 to 71, partly cloudy with an overnight low of 43. Rain and storms likely tomorrow, high 57. Rain and storms on Wednesday, high 65. A few showers on Thursday with a high 58, then partly cloudy on Friday with a high 55. Madison at 56, Green Bay 55, Milwaukee 59 degrees. I'm Connie Weber, Sighting Unlimited, WTMJ Newstime 933. Now's the time to make those big spring purchases at Fleet Farm. Husqvarna mowers, Minn Kota trollers, Goodyear tires. Fleet Rewards credit card members can enjoy special financing for three full years on qualifying purchases. So don't wait. There's never been a better time to get everything you need for everyday life at Fleet Farm. 36-month special financing available on in-store purchases of $1,499 or more after discounts made with your Fleet Rewards credit card. Now through May 1st, 2024. Subject to credit approval. Minimum monthly payments required. See customer service for details. Hi folks, Cindy Storm Fisher and Julie Coombs here at Storm Fisher Investment Group with just one question. Are you happy with how your investments are growing? We've been helping people just like you for over 40 years and we'd be happy to help you. We have no agenda, no quotas to meet and great relationships are our business. If you're looking for an advisory relationship like you've never had before, call us. Let's see if it's a great fit. Storm Fisher Investment Group online at stormfisher.com. See you soon. Securities offered through Securities America Inc. Member FINRA SIPC. Advisory services offered through Arbor Point Advisors LLC. Storm Fisher, Arbor Point and Securities America are separate entities. The pulse of the Milwaukee Bucks, straight from a Bucks legend. Can't get it off. Marcus Johnson will, though. You can't leave him alone for a ball. Tap into Here District with Marcus Johnson on Bucks Plus. Marcus and his son Chris offer a weekly beat on Bucks basketball. Get your questions answered and hear from the biggest names in basketball. Find Here District with Marcus Johnson at bucks.com slash plus on the Bucks app or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm excited to be joined by my friend, Jill Kreider. She is the president of Azura Memory Care and Assisted Living. Tell me kind of about the mission of Azura. Our mission is to transform the culture of care, have a secure place, live a quality of life that maybe they don't have currently. When I'm at an Azura facility, it feels like home. Having team members that really care about people is number one. Thank you for what you do for our community. Thank you for what you do for the people that live in the community. Of course. Thank you for having me. Welcome back to the Monday edition of the Political Power Hour on WTMJ. I'm Tracy Johnson. In for Steve Scafidi, Matt Smith, Jesse Opoyan. Friends of the show, you, Absolutely. You're, you know Great them. Absolutely. Great to be here. Know them well. We're talking all things uh, politics on this Monday morning. So, Jesse, you had an article over the weekend. Uh, Wisconsin GOP, they hired a new executive director, Andrew Iverson. Tell us a little bit about him and how this is going to help the the Republican Party in Wisconsin get back on track, so to speak. 
Sure. So the, the previous executive director, Mark Jefferson, stepped down a couple months ago. He's now um, serving as head of the, the Tavern League. Um, you know, he's a, a longtime GOP veteran here in Wisconsin. Um, Andrew Iverson is a Wisconsin native. Um, you know, those of us who have covered campaigns here for a while have interacted with him on a number of different campaigns. He's worked for uh, Ron Johnson's campaign, Brian Stiles' campaign. Most recently, had been working with the RNC, so doing some more kind of co- coordination between uh, the, the Midwest region, Wisconsin, and the national level. Uh, so, you know, I, I think the party's been waiting and hoping to get someone in that role pretty quickly to, to get things moving again. Obviously they've had some fundraising challenges, so I'm, I'm sure that'll be a focus. Uh, and you know, they've, they're ramping up for the RNC to be here in Milwaukee. So it's, uh, it's time for them to, <laughs> to get somebody into that role. Well, when you talk about those fundraising challenges, uh, state records showed recently that the Republican party brought in something like 863 thousand dollars as compared to 9.6 million uh, on the Democrat side that is a huge disparity and differential so this is going to be a major focus for for this new position how does this position of executive director uh, work with the state party chair uh, Brian Schimming so the executive director position is, is actually a lot more responsible for kind of the day-to-day okay. operations um, but the chairman is is um, that's that's sort of the one who's primarily tasked with fundraising, but you know obviously they work together on everything. And um, you know Brian Schimming is the first person that they'd hired to to take that on a, in a paid role to manage fundraising. So you know obviously a big focus for him. And one of the big pushes of the Republican Party, one of the big things that they've been talking about is early voting and absentee voting. We heard last week uh, former President Trump saying, "Don't vote early. Vote on the day of." During that same press conference, you saw Senator Ron Johnson come out and say, no, 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 vote early, vote early. Um, And then you see a lot of the candidates and especially the party saying you need to vote early. How does how does the GOP come together and and where do they land on this issue, Matt? It's going to be incredibly fascinating to see how this plays out, because as you just mentioned, I I was up at the Trump rally in in Green Bay a a couple weeks ago and, and you had person after person, Brian Schimming, as you mentioned, Ron Johnson, come on stage. And at this point in the race, if you're at a Trump rally, you're you're a diehard supporter, right? You were there, you wanted to see him. His first campaign stop in Wisconsin of 2024. And their message was, we need to embrace early voting. We need to get those numbers up early. And there was a snowstorm that day. And Ron Johnson pointed out that there were, you know, by the end of the day, I think it was eight, nine inches up in Green Bay, said, listen, if we have a day like this on election day, and you can't get to the poll, we need to make sure our, our votes are there. At the same time, you have Trump saying what he's saying, and, and Brian Schimming will talk about this until he's right in the face, saying we are going to implement and we are going to push early voting. Bank your vote is the RNC campaign, and he says this is going to continue in Wisconsin. How voters respond is going to be the true test in November. So did we see any early indications uh, with the spring primary in terms of how that effort might be going? You know, I, yes and no, with no really, with no primary on the ballot, right? An actual competitive primary, the sure. names were still there. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, but I talked to a good number of Trump supporters uh, up at the rally, and and we talked about this early voting push, and a lot of them agreed that yes, we need to embrace this. We need to vote early to to capture what Democrats are doing on the early voting side. So I, I think there is an appetite among Republican voters to embrace this. But we'll see what the Trump factor is between now and November. It's always the Trump factor. I want to switch now. We have the RNC in Wisconsin, something like 90 days away uh, from from now, we heard some headlines that some of the, the 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 businesses, some of the organizations, are slow to book event venues, and perhaps the economic impact might not be what what we thought it will be. Do you make anything of that having to do with with the fact that our nominee is Donald Trump? Uh, I think some people will question that. Um, I, I think there'll be some in the business community who who do, qu- especially at, at the end of the day when we look and see what bookings are, right? And we see venues and, and we see who has come to town and who hasn't come to town. And, and the RNC will point out, listen, the delegations are just now solidifying their yeah. hotels. So now we're going to really start to see from the RNC's perspective is these bookings of events on what's going to happen Monday morning, what's going to happen Monday night after after the events at, at Fiserv, and, and where are the parties going to be? So I, I think it's 
to be determined in, in, in terms of what happens on that. But if there are notable exceptions and notable people who stay away, that will be significant. Well, and my understanding is that there's a significant amount of media and a lot of those folks had to be moved because now all the delegate delegations yep. are finding out their hotel rooms. So if anything, we're going to see a lot of media talking about Wisconsin. Jesse, do you have anything to add? No, I mean, I'm just looking forward to hopefully getting to show off Wisconsin and show Milwaukee off to, to national media and you know, national delegates. But, um, you know, I, I, I was at the Cleveland convention. It was really interesting to see how the downtown in Cleveland transformed. Um, and, you know, I'm, I, hopefully we'll start to see the same start to happen in Milwaukee. Yeah, with 90 days to go, we're certainly starting to see everything fall into place. And the, when I see Milwaukee on the national stage, yep. it just looks beautiful. With Top Chef, we're seeing all of, all of this great visibility. So more to come on that. All right, when we come back, young voters are overly, overwhelmingly Democratic. Uh, Matt, on last week's show, you had profiled some young voters and how they're doing with President Biden. Matt Smith, Jesse Opoyan, more when we come back on the Political Power Hour. Hey, it's WTMJ Steve's Committee for Universal Windows Direct. Call Universal Windows Direct today, 414-410-2000. For every two windows you buy, get two free. Buy two, get two. Buy four, get four. Buy 20, get 20. No limits. Plus, they'll upgrade your new windows to triple pane glass for free. Extra protection from the elements. Call 414-410-2000. Schedule your free in-home estimate today. For every two windows you buy, get the next two free. Tell them I told you to call, and you get $250 off your order. Like me, you'll be saying, I love my windows. Burkhardt Sporting Goods in New Berlin is the baseball lover's destination. With a massive state-of-the-art indoor training facility featuring hit tracks with precision analytics, a huge open turf area, and all the best training equipment you need. So get in here and get ready to get better. And we'll help you with this special offer. Buy 20 batting cage credits for $30. That's 25% off. This is Brian Burkhardt, and if you love baseball and softball like we do, you can't beat Burkhardt. 153rd and National. If you plan on draining buzzer beaters, the place to start is Burkhart, where you'll find a great selection of residential basketball hoops from the best brand, Golrilla. We'll handle the installation and take care of everything to make it easy from start to finish. And right now when you buy from Burkhart, standard hoop installation is half price. Only $250 for standard installation. You can't beat that. This is Brian Burkhart, and when you love basketball like we do, you can't beat Burkhart. New Berlin and Fox Point. Hey, it's WTMJ's Greg Matzik here to tell you about my friends over at the Hounds and Tap in Menominee Falls. It's a state-of-the-art facility and the ultimate hangout for hounds and humans. Grab a drink at the tavern, meet others while your pup enjoys the dog park. That's a mud-free dog park, by the way. Fun, happy, clean, and a great environment for everyone. The Hounds and Tap also provides doggy daycare, boarding, and professional grooming services. We take our greyhound there regularly. Learn more about their services. Check out thehoundsandtap.com. That's thehoundsandtap.com. The original Botanas Restaurant. Delectable entrees. 50 top shelf tequilas. 20 different margarita flavors. Stop by for lunch or before or after the big game. The original Botanas on 5th Street. Casa es su casa. That's Botanas. Acunet Mortgage is an equal housing lender. NMLS ID 255368. One of the best things about being in business for 25 years is having clients recommend Acunet to their now adult children for help buying their first homes. That's how I connected with Dan and Allison. And let me tell you, they were fast learners. They quickly embraced our most powerful tool for winning offers, Appraisal Wiggle Room. Their first offer was 15000 over asking and included a provision which Acunet guaranteed they could afford to make that they would still pay the higher offer price even if the appraised value came in up to fifteen grand short. The result? Accepted offer versus several others on the very first try. And by the way, if the appraisal had come in fifteen grand short, which it did not, Dan and Allison would have needed exactly zero extra dollars at the closing table. If you think all mortgage lenders are the same, think again. Go with a multi-generation mortgage lender that has the tools and know-how to help you win. Click on the blue button today at accunet.com. Welcome back to the Fastest Hour in Radio, WTMJ, <laughs> the political power hour, Matt Smith. Jesse Okoyan. All right. This is a fascinating topic for me. And it, when we talk about demographics, I yeah. love looking at demographics. So young voters under 30, Matt, according to the show last week, you talked about 
them being overly democratic and really the 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 voting block that President Biden needs to win re-election. He was in Madison yep. on Monday talking about stone, student loan relief. Uh, what's going on here? <clears throat> so <clears throat> Charles Franklin has compiled this Mar- Marquette Law School poll expert, right? The director of the Marquette Law School mm-hmm. poll. So he says, look at voters under 30. They are the most democratic uh, out of any age group. They identify as very or or they identify as the most liberal uh, out of any age group. But at the same time, when you have those two factors, Biden's approval rating among that group is the lowest among any other age group. So you have these incredibly democratic voters who don't really like Joe Biden. So here comes Monday of last week. He's in Madison to uh, announce the administration's uh, another attempt at student loan debt relief the first attempt blocked by the U.S. Supreme Court. And the question is whether this is going to mobilize young voters like Democrats in the Biden administration need, especially in a state like this, especially in Dane County, Mm -hmm. need them to get to the polls. We talked to some voters who were there. We talked to a young voter who actually introduced the president. And she said, listen, yes, student loan debt relief is important, but there's other issues that that young voters are are talking about. You you look at Palestine, you look at abortion, and and whether the Biden administration can excite voters like they did in 2020 and 2022 is is still a major question out there. Well, and the other issue is affordability. I mean, it's it's impossible for these young people to buy a home or, you know, pay off their debt, buy a car. Mm -hmm. Jesse, what are you hearing? Yeah, I mean, I think one thing worth looking at, you know, within that that demographic, you know, that, that Matt mentioned is that the voters who chose to vote for the uninstructed delegation option in the Democratic primary actually surpassed slightly the margin by which Joe Biden beat Donald Trump here in Wisconsin in 2020. Um, and, you know, how many of those voters took that chance to send a message to say, hey, Biden campaign, you know, you got to start speaking to our concerns and we'll come come around, you know, come November. And how many are going to remain disillusioned? It's, um, you know, like Matt said, it's 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 Gaza, it's abortion rights, um, but inflation is huge. Um, interest rates are high. Um, I think people are c- concerned about climate change still and not seeing enough, you know, done about that um on the left so the well and and actually to be fair you know that's a growing issue among conservative voters too they're really looking for republican candidates to start talking about that so um you know they're it's it's not that young voters don't care i don't think it's that they're just annoyed and they're frustrated with both of their options and from a, a a numbers standpoint even though this is such a an overwhelmingly you know, large, this is a large portion of the electorate, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, these these are millennials, these are Gen Z voters. They make a huge portion of the voting block. So when you, when you talk about percentages of them leaning Democrat, you know, that's a big deal. Do these voters eventually come home? That's the question. Democrats will want to tell you at this point, yes, they yes. will by November. Whether that happens or not, uh, we don't know. As Jesse mentioned, the incredible number who voted uninstructed. So the question is, would they continue uh, to not vote for Biden? Would they vote for someone else? It obviously JFK isn't. Yeah, it's is not. Gonna, it's not going to be Donald Trump, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think you're going to have these hardcore liberal voters voting for Donald Trump. Who else is on the ballot? Jill Stein. Does RFK Jr. get on the ballot? And, and then the question is. Do they just stay home? Mm-hmm. And if they do that, what is the impact? Well, yeah, and that's where they you start ask, asking the question, are you better off today yeah. than you were four years ago? So Donald Trump, too, I mean, we start to see poll numbers. In fact, we have a, a poll coming out on Wednesday from Marquette University. Yep. How is he attempting to make his tent bigger? Listen, I, I think when you look at what he came out last week uh, on abortion saying we should leave it to the states, uh, I think Republicans know that they are going to have to face this issue and have to come up with a response that is is going to not mobilize necessarily, but I guess be OK to this group of independent voters that are kind of in the middle that could vote one way or another. Uh, I mean, you look at a a, a Ron Johnson, Tony Evers voter, right? Like that happened in 2022 just because of the results. So you look at that core group of voters and when you look at the economy and immigration, those are incredibly important issues. Trump, at least according to Marquette's last poll, we'll see what Wednesday says, had the lead in Wisconsin on who would do better on those issues. Um, Biden has consistently led on the issue of abortion 
and how important that still is in November of 2024 will be interesting and how Republicans respond to what happens in the states and, and what may or may not happen nationally is important as well. Well, and especially in states where it's uh, quote unquote unsettled. Mm-hmm. Um, you looked at what happened in Arizona. You, you, you have the conversation still ongoing here in Wisconsin, and the Supreme Court likely won't take this up before then. Jesse, what do you think Donald Trump is doing to to make his tent bigger? Yeah, I I think at this point, it it may be less about widening the tent and more about hoping that you can be strong on the issues that are going to win in November. Um, You know, you don't have a lot of people who are not sure how they feel about abortion, that you don't have a lot of people who are not sure whether, you know, inflation is affecting their lives. Um, But if Donald Trump can continue to lean into, you know, being perceived as a candidate who's stronger on issues like the border, on issues like the economy, um, and try to just walk the line and thread the needle as much as possible on abortion and hope that that's not the deciding factor. That's probably um, going to play out better for him at the end of the day. Jesse Opoyan, Matt Smith, when we come back, we will look ahead and what is the issue, the political issue that we should be paying attention to. More on WTMJ Political Power Hour. It's 9.52. Be our eyes on the road. See something out there that I should know about? I-94, eastbound. A semi just came to a screeching stop in the center lane. I think he's broken down right there. Call me, Debbie Lazaga, at the Hall Volkswagen traffic tip line at 414-238-9329. On southbound I-94, right around Drexel Avenue, there's a wreck in the left lane, and the left lane is blocked. The drive affects you. Why not be part of it? Give me a call, 414-238-9329. Hey, it's WTMJ's Steve Scafidi for the Bath Authority. If your bath or shower is old, outdated, has mold and mildew, broken tiles, you got to call my friends at the Bath Authority. The Bath Authority provides the highest quality bathroom remodeling products along with a world-class customer experience. Their modern, durable tubs and showers are designed with an exclusive high-tech polymer liner. What that means to you? Low maintenance, resistance to mold and mildew, easy to clean, and lasts for decades. You're their priority at the Bath Authority. TheBathAuthority.com. A better bath awaits. Sharks. Most people see them as a threat, but we see a potential cure. At UW Health Carbone Cancer Center, we're the only team in the world researching whether antibodies from sharks can be used to fight cancer. A discovery that would revolutionize the future of cancer care, turning possibilities into remarkable realities. So one day, instead of what if... We can ask, what's next? UW Health Carbone Cancer Center. Remarkable. Since 1964, we've changed your tires and so much more. Richland's Tire and Service, such a refreshing change. Richland's. There are surgeons lining up to be the one to do your joint replacement. But my advice? Exhaust all your options and put off joint replacement as long as you can. Make it your very last resort, because life after joint replacement isn't always what it's cracked up to be. As high as 30% of patients who have undergone joint replacement surgery report unsatisfactory results. And the cost, even with insurance, can be extraordinary. At Rejuvenix, we'll help ease your pain and improve your mobility with FDA-approved pharmacological treatments that precisely target where your pain lives. And by easing your pain and inflammation, we'll help you live a better life. And because we're in network with most major insurance plans, your out-of-pocket expense could be very affordable or nothing at all. This is Richard Salinas, registered nurse with Rejuvenex Arthritis Clinics, where we can alleviate your pain and rejuvenate your life. Rejuvenix. Alleviate your pain, rejuvenate your life. Go to rejuvenix.com to request your appointment. David Nason, host of the Fix It Show, here with my friend Chris Mancuso, owner of Accurate Basement Repair. Chris, what are some signs of basement problems that need to be addressed? Hey, David, that's a great question. I would say wall cracks, leaning walls, dark or maybe some discolored stains across the walls. Those are really important things to look at. As a home inspector, I see this often. Don't wait to call the experts I recommend at Accurate Basement Repair today for your free assessment. They're They're not not just good, good, they're they're accurate. accurate. WTMJ, W277-CV, and WKTI HD2 Milwaukee. From the Annex Wealth Management Studios, this is News Radio WTMJ, a good karma brand station. Welcome back to the Political Power Hour on WTMJ. I'm Tracy Johnson, in for Steve Scafidi. We got Matt Smith, Jesse Opoyan. We got about a minute each here. As we look ahead, 
We'll start with you, Jesse. As we look ahead, what story are you watching and what should the listeners be watching in the next couple of days? Well, the Senate race uh, at the national level here continues to ramp up, and today is the reporting deadline for campaign finance reports. So um, campaigns generally ahead of, the, of time will release a few details, the ones that are probably most favorable to them, but you don't really get a, a full look under the hood until those reports come in. So, you know, we know um, Tammy Baldwin has raised more than $5.4 million in, the, in this first quarter. She shared that with us, but we don't know how much camp, um, how much she spent. Um, we don't know, you know, the full breakdown of where all that's coming from. And we're waiting for more details from Eric Hubde. Um, we know that he's probably loaned his campaign some money. Um, he surpassed at least a million dollars, you know, since he entered the race, because that's what he needed to secure the, the party's endorsement going forward. Um, but again, don't know what that spending has looked like. And, um, you know, but We're going to continue to see ads running, continue to see more activity there. So I'm just looking forward to getting a more detailed look at what the campaigns uh, have been raising and spending. Matt, what show, show me the money, right, show Jesse? Me the money. <laughs> that's, that's what we're talking about this week. Um, I, I want to. I'm so curious uh, on the state supreme court with Ann Walsh Bradley's announcement that she's not going to seek re-election. How fast are we going to see any definite movement from some judges and justices uh, on the liberal side? If any are going to immediately jump in and say I'm running, there's been some flirting with the thought of running. So what is that list going to look like? And on the conservative side, is anyone else thinking now about getting in to challenge Brad Schimmel? in terms of any potential primary and with her not announcing a re-election, how fast now are we going to see this before November? Because you're going to have to fundraise a lot of money uh, ahead of April. So how fast is that going to play out is, is what I'm going to be watching. I feel like the theme here was money, all about the money. <laughs> money, money, money. All right. Well, I'm really excited to see the Market University Law School poll yes. that you uh, referred to. There's been so many things that have changed over the last few weeks since the poll was last yep. uh, turned out. Uh, Matt Smith, a political reporter with w, uh, WISN and host of Upfront, Jesse Opoyan with the Milwaukee Journal. Thank you so much for being here. We'll be back tomorrow uh, for more Political Power Hour, but stay tuned for the upswing with Jeff Sherman. And the news is next. QC Kinetics announces the arrival of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup, an acclaimed orthopedic surgeon with two decades of experience and extensive research in regenerative medicine. I was one of the first orthopedic surgeons to do it, and at the same time, I integrated clinical research that's resulted in several publications that are really directing the future of regenerative medicine. I was drawn to QC Kinetics after I reviewed their protocol.